we're at the Resource World, one of my favorite places to play with Rampage. And we're currently gonna crock to see who has position, because last time I had position. You go first. Okay. Molar, molar, no, no molars. Wow. Oh no! You have the ultimate free roll now. Let him pick, pick for me. The one that's up. Let's go! Starting off today's episode with the complete degenerate PLO bomb pod did, yeah. against some really fun, friendly faces. So buckle up as this is a whole lot to go over. It's PLO, it's a bomb pot, it's double board. We're going five ways to a $50 bomb pot that comes on the top board, ace, four, seven, and on the bottom board, monotone, eight, seven, four, all spades. We look down at our hand and we see nine, nine, five, three, single suit of diamonds this is a pretty garbage hand here the action checks all the way through though so maybe we can realize some equity and we in fact do as a turn car comes the deuce of diamonds giving us the nut wheel here and on the bottom one it comes a three of diamonds we do have a gut shot on one other board as well as a blocker to a flush e thingy i don't really know but you got to bet when you have a good hand. I know that I can lock up one side of the board, so I make it $150. I get a call from the cutoff, and I get a call from Ethan in the big blind. And we're going off to a river card that on the top board comes a 10 of clubs, and on the bottom court comes the five of diamonds. Just trying to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that I do lock up the top board. The worst thing that can happen to me is that I can get quartered here, which would be pretty horrific, but I decide to bet $600. My opponent in the cutoff pretty quickly decides to make the call. And now Ethan exposes his hand and is asking for some assistance. Ethan, as you guys can hear, is laughing and shows a flush on one board. And on the other board, he has top two pair. So uh, this feels like a pretty easy call. But Ethan decides to fold his hand, which would have been a chopping hand. As my opponent has two pair on the bottom board and he has two pair on the top board he was playing two pair on both boards ethan would have chopped the pot with me i would have still had the nuts on the top board and ethan would have had a flush on the bottom board ridiculous turn of events there unfortunate for ethan luckily for me i guess i would have won either way or at least chopped the pot unlucky for them and lucky for me we're able to take down a healthy little pot there and looking to really capitalize this and move along after that very wild first hand, uh, we're looking to really tame things down. Don't get this confused. Pretty much everyone at this table is a freaking sicko. So we're definitely going to be in for quite the battle. This first hand is the epitome of what I'm talking about. Under the gun, friend of the vlog, Mike decides to raise to $75. I'm on the button and we look down at Ace Juice of Clubs. Pretty much only like this as a 3-bet, but for some reason, I only make the call. Not excited about that, but it is what I do. We're going off to a flop that comes ace, king, seven with two hearts and a club. We flop ourselves top pair, which is great. My opponent bets $50, which is small, which is great. So I end up deciding to make the call here. Feels like doing anything besides, you know, calling is kind of overplaying my hand. We're going off to a turn card that comes a seven of diamonds. This is a pretty good card as we now improve our kicker. Is this no longer a deuce? We can throw that away, but... It is a little harder for my opponent to have a ton of bluffs here. My opponent decides to bet a massive sizing of $400, and he's putting us in a really difficult situation. At this point, if you're doing the math, that's significantly over the size of the pot. But again, at this juncture, folding seems a little too nitty, so I make the call looking to think about how things work out as, you know, we're being dealt the river. And the river card comes a jack of diamonds. The front door flush draw misses... There's nothing to worry about as far as straights. The only thing that exists, I think, in my opponent's range that contains a straight would be Queen 10 of Hearts specifically. And it seems like it's something that I'm going to be having to worry about as Mike decides to bet $1,600. Starting off the session, going into the tank is not fun. But I go deep into the tank. The weird thing about this whole dynamic is Mike, you know, almost brags about the ability of having a true bluffing range. 
but it's it's just hard to have a ton of bluffs here besides specifically a holding like 10 9 of hearts i just don't see a ton of bluffs like the only thing that's troubling here is that he is polarized. He has to have a massive one or nothing. But even his nothing has to have some form of blocking. So I feel like 10-9 is a pretty reasonable holding to do that with. He'd be blocking the nut straight, which is a benefit. But it's just so hard to tell. And as you guys know, when I can't put the pieces together, it feels like it's almost, at this point, habitual for me to throw in the calling chips. After quite a bit of tanking, I end up doing just that. I make the hero call with my horrible pair of aces with the king kicker. And Mike doesn't show me what I was expecting to see. He has a boat, but of the jack seven of spades variety. Hats off to him. He played the hand really well. And as he knows, and I'm sure I know, is he knows the he knew his demographic. He knew he had to put me in a tough spot. If he best small on the river, I think it's a pretty easy lay down. But by polarizing himself he's a strong player made it difficult for me either way we're deep into the hole early on in the session down well over two thousand dollars bordering on to twenty five hundred dollars we're gonna really need to earn this one we're gonna have to battle our way out of the hole moving right along here under the gun once again raises to 75 dollars. that is our friend mike again we're playing five-handed at this point we look down at ace six offsuit last time we didn't three bet our ace when we should have this time we're going to i make it 250 dollars to go he decides to make the call and we're going off to a flop that comes king six five rainbow nice flop for us as we flop second pair here which is most likely the best hand and we have the nut kicker i decided to see bet pretty small here when it checks to me for 175 dollars and he makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes at 10 of clubs. With the action checked over to me, not a great turn card. A lot of his floats do improve. So ace 10 makes sense. You know, queen 10 makes sense. We end up deciding to check it through. And we're going off to an even worse river card that comes a queen. Not great as a ton just gets there. Ace jack floats. Ace queen floats. Queen 10 improves the two pair. King queen improves the two pair. Not a whole lot you know that's really working in my favor what's even more frustrating is that mike decides to lead out for 225 dollars i'm in the tank yet again and yet again i make the incorrect decision by folding mike will later on tell me that he had ace four fortunate for us we just can't catch a break here mike's definitely got our number he's a strong player and he's put me in a tough spot two times in a row looking to battle back we are down heaps the following hand is a ton of fun let's buckle up the action folds all the way over to me in the small blind and as you guys know in collection games no one ever chops because it just doesn't make a lot of sense i end up raising it from the small blind with pocket jacks to a hundred dollars the big blind decides to make the call and we're going off to a flop to come seven five deuce rainbow excellent flop for everyone involved it seems like i end up checking it over to my opponent as this is not a board that's great for the razor's range pre-flop he decides to bet 75 dollars I make the call and we're going off to a turn card that comes a four of diamonds. This does complete some straights that were available on the flop. And this also brings a backdoor flush draw. Deciding to continue to play with caution, I check it over to my opponent and he is not slowing down. $275 to go. Again, pitching it in seems incorrect, so I make the call. We're going off to a river card that comes in nine of clubs. Yet again, another bad river card. Even hands that were semi-bluffing seem to get there in some variety. And furthermore, a bunch of two pairs are now available for my opponents to have on this board texture. I check it over to my opponent, and once again, he bets $650. I think with this specific sizing, I'm a little confused here. It would make sense if my opponent did turn a, gut, a gutter ball here or whatever. It does make sense for my opponent to have you know, some straights. But more than likely, it seems like... My opponent, I don't know, it's it's hard to put the pieces together. And as we told you guys earlier, I'm a habitual caller when things don't add up. In this case, my hand is just way, way, it, it, it's so underrepped. It seems to my opponent that I have two pairs of napkins. I end up making the hero call once again, and my opponent shows king seven. I I don't know if that was a bluff or, or value or emerge mate i don't even know what that was either way you got to give him props for going for it luckily for us this does in fact go in our favor and we end up finally winning a massive pot to get us into the proper direction remember in this session we were down over three thousand dollars and we're looking to battle our way back
In this following hand, we have no video, but it's such an important hand as it's a big one, it's important to go over. We're still playing five-handed. I decide to raise to $75 from the cutoff with ace-9 offsuit, and the big blind makes a call, and we're going off to a flop that comes ace-9-4, two spades and a diamond. Earlier, we couldn't catch a freaking break, and now we can't do anything but catch the flops. With the action checked over to me, I decide to see bid here for $50. I don't need to go too massive here. There's not a whole lot of flush draws that I have to be worried about. Again, there's more flush draws in my opponent's big blind calling range than there are in my range, especially when the board has an ace high, you know, already an ace high spade. Either way, not a lot to worry about until my opponent raises to $200. This is a little worrisome for a lot of reasons as uh, maybe my opponent has pocket fours or maybe pocket nines, but we double blocked the top two sets, so I ended up making the call. Anything else seems ridiculous, so we're going off to a turn card that comes a seven of spades. That does complete the front door flush draw, and again, my opponent is more likely to have them than me. My opponent decides to bet for $300, and again, at this point, doing anything besides calling seems horrific, so I make the call, and the river card comes a four of heart. That does bring the bottom card pairing, which is nice because it's, again, less likely for my opponent to have a set. But when my opponent bets $1,000, I'm just even more perplexed. Like, what the heck do you have? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It, I mean, it does make sense. You're selling me on the story of a flush, but that's just... It's, it's hard to make those, man. It just is. Sure, my opponent can raise some flushes. Like, maybe the really weak ones, like... I don't know. Six, seven of spades would have been a good one, but the seven of spades is out there. So at this point, I'm starting to think it's just less likely for my opponent to have a flush. After quite a bit of tanking and what many would maybe perceive as the nit roll, I end up making the 1K hero call. And this time, finally, we were right. Mike shows ace queen. That was a complete surprise for us. And he was 100% saying that he was betting for value. Luckily for us, we're going to take that pot down. And uh, if a spade doesn't come out there, that's a massive, massive pot. But either way, we're going to go ahead and take that pot down. And finally, on our way back to the black. Alrighty, as you guys can see, not a great start. We lost a massive pot against a good friend of the vlog, Mike. He's an absolute crusher. He's a sicko. And uh, he put me in a tough spot. And I think that was a bad call in the river. But either way, we're looking to get it back. The game's all right. The only tough thing is we're shorthanded. Um, yeah, this... What am I talking? The game is tough. Mike is really good. Uh, Ryan's really good. Ethan's good. And there's like a super pro or whatever the heck, you know, just like a pro looking to eke out some hourlies in the big line or the first seat one. So not a great game, but we're hoping to make it better by just, I guess, playing ridiculous. We're obviously not anywhere in the top half of the skill level of this table. So it's about just mixing it up and doing weird things. So hopefully uh, the, the cards run in our favor. Otherwise, let's hop back into today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoy the videos. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, y'all. Bear with me as I was able to get video of this hand, but I was only able to grab it as the hand had already started. So follow me as I catch you guys up here. The cutoff decides to raise to $75. I'm in the small blind, and we look down at ace 10 offsuit. Probably plays best in the aggressive variety by three betting, but you know, I've been doing quite a bit of three betting. It seems like calling is a good mix of things, so I go ahead and do just that. We're going off heads up to a flop that is unbelievable. 10, 10, 7 with two hearts and a spade. Very interesting as there is a flush draw, there's a straight draw, and there's a trip situation on the board already. A lot to go over. With the action checked over to my opponent, he pretty quickly checks it back. The turn card comes a deuce of spades. With the action on me, I decide to lead out here for $125. We don't need to go too massive at this juncture, but it does feel good betting over half the size of the pot, or at least somewhere in the vicinity. We're already betting in the 60 to 70 percentile, and it's luckily for us that my opponent makes a call. There's a couple things going on in my mind. My opponent can either have an over pair, which is very likely, or an ace high or a big flush draw. Us going to the river, it comes a beautiful deuce of diamonds. This now improves us to a boat. Hard to be better than a boat. With the action on me, once again, in this hand, we have to do something ridiculous. Earlier, Mike got us with a big, big over bet. Now it's my turn. There's about $500 in the middle, and I want to go 1.5x. It's hard to balance yourself in these weird spots, but again, if you watch my vlogs, you know I'll find a way to bluff. And I go ahead and do just that. Well, I mean the overbet part. I didn't have a bluff here. I make it $750 to go. A massive overbet. And Mike pretty quickly decides 
to make the call. Great news for us, as we show our hand, and it is good. Just like that, we are fully out of the black. I mean, we're fully out of the red, and it feels amazing to have battled back in a tough session against a tough lineup. Shout out to the Rye guys, somebody you've been seeing playing on the bike stream. Good for the game, and definitely a solid player. Don't let him fool you. He's a fun player, but a solid one at that. He's under the gun. He makes it $75. I find myself in the cutoff at looking down at Ace, King of Spades. I decide to raise here the three bet to $275. Don't need to go too massive here. We are already in position. He makes a call. And we're going off to a flop that comes Ace, Five, Four, with two hearts and a club. This is pretty interesting as there is a flush draw, but more than likely, just not a lot of those exist out there. Sure, maybe King X of Hearts or Queen X of Hearts is possible, but again, not all that likely. Anyways, I decided to see bet for $175, looking to target middling pairs as well as top pair holdings. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the begrudge and lay down, and we're going to go ahead and take that pot down. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one I show anyways. I think that one's pretty face up. Ace King, uh, Ace King of Spades. Going over the last hand of the session, yet again we pick up a premium. Middle position decides to make it $75. I look down at Ace King offsuit here. I make the three bet to 300 buckaroonies. With the action back over to my opponent, he decides to four bet to $650. He's playing around $3,000 effective, so there's definitely space for us to five bet here. It's hard to do this in poker, but it feels great when you do. I five bet to $1,300. Unfortunately for us, or maybe it is fortunate, our opponent snap folds and we picked up another $650 plus dollars here. Today's session started off in a miserable area. We were getting destroyed and we were able to fight back to claw back. Even though not everything worked in our favor, we did get a very friendly ladder to the session. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and commenting. Let's throw it over to me in person and let's see how we feel at the end of that session. It seems like it's only tradition at this point where we do our little shtick and we do our outro here at the uh, the parking lot here. Today's game was actually pretty fun. It was tough, obviously, even though our friends were a little bit intoxicated and it is unfair because I don't drink, there's still gonna be some crushers or at least try to be. We were into today's game for 5,000 playing 10, 25, 50 on some points and we were out of today's game for 69, 27. So just shy of a 2K win, we'll take it. We played for several hours. We played all right, I guess. God, I wish I made that, that full there with the ace deuce. Mike is just really good, and I just... It's a spewy call, but I feel like you gotta give him some love, man. He's, he's good enough to make a, a big bluff there. Thank you so much for watching. Just trying to battle back. Uh, we're like halfway back from losing heap, so appreciate you guys always. Let's hop into the car. Let's get the hell home. I'm tired as hell. Long day of poker. Love you guys as always. Stay happy, stay healthy, and more importantly, we're good at the tables, y'all.